Hello geometers, welcome to our second trig video. Today's notes are about using trig ratios to find missing measures, so miss missing sides. So we only have one objective. We're going to find missing side measures using sine, cosine, and tangent. So we're going to take what we learned yesterday, we're going to set up a trig ratio, a sine, cosine, and tangent ratio, but then we're going to solve for a side. So looking at example one, it says find the value of x. Looking at the angle that we have, angle 32, and then our two sides. In regards to 32, side 11 is the opposite side, because it's a cross. Here's my hypotenuse, and then here's my adjacent. Now, I don't have the hypotenuse. I don't have anything there. I need to think of what ratio uses O and A. Well, if we write at the top, so ka, toa, the ratio that uses O and A is tangent. So tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. In this case, I'm taking the tangent of 32 degrees, and that is equal to my opposite side, which is 11, over my adjacent side, which is x. And now I need to solve for x. Now tangent of 32 degrees, that's just a number. So I'm going to put that number over 1. The reason I would do that is so I can now use cross products. 1 multiplied by 11 is just 11, x multiplied by tangent of 32, just keep it like that. It's x multiplied by the tangent of 32. Now to get x, I divide by the tangent of 32. So I get x equals 11 divided by the tangent of 32 degrees. And now we need to go to the calculator. First thing that we need to do is make sure that our calculator is in the correct mode. So hit mode. You want to choose degree. For most of you, probably radian is chosen. So go down, scroll over to hit degree, and then hit enter. This is not going to mess you up for any science classes. So it's okay for chemistry. Um, you're not going to use radians until senior year, so you can leave your calculator in degree mode. Now hit second quit. So we found x is 11 divided by tangent of 32. So let's do that. 11 divided by sine, cosine, and tangent. You can see there are in a row. So we do 11 divided by 32, make sure the 32 is in parentheses, and hit enter. So we find x to be 17.604. So x is 17.604. Okay, so again, those buttons are right here, sine, cosine, and tangent. And then the other thing to remember is that you end the parentheses around the degree. If not, you could get the wrong calculation. You could find the wrong side measure. Okay, so that was example one. I think we should do example two together just to make sure we, we know what we're doing before we move on. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Now looking at example two, it's the same thing. Find the value of x. This time, we have two sides, though. Uh, 9.5 is the opposite side. 17 is the hypotenuse. And then x is the adjacent. So I need to use x. I have to use x because that's what I'm solving for. So I have to use a. And then I have two options. I can either use the opposite side or I can use the hypotenuse. So I could do opposite and adjacent, which would be tangent, which is what we just did. Or I could use adjacent and hypotenuse, which would give me cosine. Either one, since I know both the opposite and the hypotenuse side. Now, because we just used tangent, I'm not going to use tangent. I'm going to use cosine. So this time, the cosine of 34 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. Again, I'm going to put cosine of 34 over 1. And then I'm going to do my cross products. x multiplied by 1 is just x. 17 and cosine of 34 is 17 times the cosine of 34. Please do not multiply 17 and 34. Cosine of 34 is one unit. You can't break it up at all. You can't multiply the 34 by anything, it just stays the way it is. And then we would go to our calculator, and we would do 17 multiplied by cosine of 34. When you do that, you get x to be 
14.084. And I like to just do a little mental check. Does that make sense? So in our figure, x is 14.084. Well, we notice that that's less than the hypotenuse. So that's a good sign. So our answer does make sense. Okay, let's see how you all can do. Looking at example three, it says find the perimeter of the triangle. So let's start by labeling our sides. We have side 32. The x is going to be opposite. The y is going to be adjacent. And then the 18 is going to be hypotenuse. So it says find the perimeter. You need to find both the x and the y. So you're going to have to set up two separate ratios, one for the x and one for the y, and then find the perimeter. So pause the, right, the video right now. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now, when we're looking for x, we have opposite, and then we have to use a side that we know. We know the 18, so we have to use hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So we have the sine of 32 is equal to x over 18. If I put this over 1, I get x equals 18 multiplied by the sine of 32. So in this case, I get x equals 9.54. Now when it comes to finding y, I need to use adjacent because that's what I'm looking for. And then the side that I was given was the 18, the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is going to be cosine. So I have the cosine of 32 equals y over 18, adjacent over hypotenuse. This gives me y equals 18 multiplied by the cosine of 32. So y in this case is 15.26. Now the final question asks you for the perimeter. Perimeter just means add up the sides. So it's going to be 9.54, my x, add 18, the hypotenuse, add y, which is 15.26. So my perimeter in this case ends up being 42.8 units. So hopefully that one went well. If it didn't, that's okay. Um, hopefully you can find the mistake that you made. And if you did that right, good job. We have one more that we are going to do together. It says, find the area of the triangle. Okay, so again, um, I want you to find A and B and then find the area. You're going to have to set up two ratios. I'm going to help you find A and then you're going to find B. 48 degrees, we notice that B is the opposite side, A is the hypotenuse, and 10 is the adjacent. Now I have to use 10 in both of my ratios because it's the only side I know. When I'm solving for A, for this little A, I have 10, which is the adjacent side, and then I'm going to look for the hypotenuse. So this is telling me I need to use cosine. So I have the cosine of 48 is equal to adjacent, which is 10, over the hypotenuse, which is A. And then I put this over 1. I'm going to do my cross products. I get 10 equals A multiplied by cosine of 48. So A is going to be 10 over cosine of 48. In this case, I find A to be 14.94. Okay, now I found A. It is your responsibility to set up, for, set up a ratio to find B and then to use that to find the area of the triangle. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. Now, in order to find B, that's the opposite side. The other side I was given is 10, which is the adjacent side. Now the ratio that uses opposite and adjacent is going to be tangent. So you should have done the tangent of 48 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is B, over the adjacent side, which is 10. Putting this over 1, we can do cross products. 
we get b is equal to 10 multiplied by the tangent of 48. So in this case, b is 11.11. .11. Now, last thing is it asked us to find the area. Hopefully, remember that area is one-half base times height. Remember that the base and the height are perpendicular. So the base in this case is B, so it's going to be one-half of 11.11. .11. The height is 10, because it's the side perpendicular. We get the area to be 55.53 units squared. So hopefully that one went well for you. If you would flip the page using trig ratios to find missing measures, classwork. So this is what we're going to do in class. Pretty similar, you have to find x and y. I would like you to do problem one for class tomorrow, please. When you come to class, I will be checking to see that you have problem one completed. I will tell you for x, you should get 7.66. I'm not going to tell you why. You need to set up a ratio for x and then another ratio for y. Good luck.